Mr. Goldman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Beer, I, I want to go back to a little bit about what my colleague from Texas was talking about in terms of the, the data. Um, obviously, it's self-evident that if there are more people in the country and a particular, a, a specific percentage of people commit crimes, there's going to be more crime, right? Yes, the That's, absolute number will increase if the total population is larger. Okay. But you and, and the Cato Institute have done some work um, on this, and, and what have you, f in terms of comparing uh, the data that is available, which is limited, of the number of uh, non-American citizens who commit crime versus those who are citizens of the United States? And, and just to summarize again what you have found. Well, the U.S. Census Bureau data, which goes through 2022, shows that uh, non-Americans or, or immigrants are 68% less likely to have committed a crime that put them in prison at that time. Uh, and if you look at it, break it down by legal status, you can say that 75% less likely for legal immigrants and uh, about 50% less likely for uh, illegal immigrants. And we keep hearing about why this is such a big surprise. It's not a surprise if you look at the demographic characteristics of immigrants. They're more likely to work, more likely to marry, particularly if you look at male immigrants. Men commit the vast majority of crimes in this country. Male immigrants work at a, a rate almost double when you control for education level than uh, similarly educated uh, Americans. Right. And, and there are other studies that, that have been done. The, the Marshall Project and the New York Times found that between 2007 and 2016, there was no link between undocumented immigrants and a rise in violent or property crime in those communities. Sheriff Weyburn was talking about in Dallas, crime is down. Crime in New York City is down also, and we've had a, a significant influx uh, of new, newly arrived migrants. So I, I, yes, of course, there will be more crime as there are more people. But if the argument is that our country is proportionately or disproportionately more dangerous and insecure and unsafe because of the influx of migrants, the statistics just simply don't bear that out. Is that right, Mr. Beer? That's right. No one's saying we should continue illegal immigration. The question is, should we allow people to come legally to this country or not? That's the whole question. It's already illegal to come here illegally. So the question is, should they be allowed to stay, have a path to legal status, have a path to come in legally? And we keep hearing that there's such this big threat. No, if the crime rate goes down, that means your likelihood of being a victim of a crime goes down. And that's a good thing. Well, let's focus on something that um, my Republicans don't like to talk about, which is the impact of guns. Uh, on the, both the fentanyl trade and the influx of migrants. Uh, am I correct, uh, Mr. Beer, that the cartels broadly rule the border in terms of the fentanyl trade as well as a lot of the migration? Is that accurate? A absolutely. They charge a fee to cross the border illegally. They control the traffic. They force people to cross where they want them to cross. It's... It yeah. is and Sher by Sheriff Weyburn, do you agree? Absolutely. And Sheriff Weyburn, do you agree that the cartels are able to control the fentanyl trade and the border because they possess weapons, guns, that help give them the, the power and authority? I haven't in inventoried their weapons, of course, but uh, they are a very powerful outlaw uh, organization, and they do have tools. Um, Sheriff Weyburn, would you be surprised to hear that uh, over 500,000 guns are trafficked annually from the United States to Mexico? None of those figures would surprise me. Right. Um, in fact, there's only one gun store in Mexico. It is almost impossible for, to get uh, a gun in Mexico. And so the cartels, who you've acknowledged, Sheriff Wayborn, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure uh, Mr. Cuccinelli, I think you've acknowledged that to me in the past, uh, the cartels rule with guns, but they rule with American-made guns. And yet, we are doing nothing to try to stop the 
uh, trade tried to stop, stop the export of American manufactured guns to the cartels, which give them the power to run the fentanyl trade and to wreak havoc at the border. And that is why I introduced a bill, the Disarming Cartels Act. I urge my Republican colleagues who do not discuss guns once in their seminal border security package to join us in trying to actually solve the problem. And to solve the problem, you need to stop the export of American-made guns to the drug cartels so that that will limit and eliminate their power. Mr. Chairman, I yield back.